Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Mac Jones, part five, big one. College football playoff semifinal versus the Irish. He has a great day. We are diving into it. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Mac Jones, part five, 25 for 30, almost 300, four touchdowns. Pretty special college football playoff semifinal, the old classic granddaddy of them all in Texas. Right here out the gate, for me, this is an example of what I would call, uh, for lack of a better term, overprocessing. <laughs> uh, what I mean by that is skipping reads. So to me, I'm going to guess that this is inside fade up top with a variation of old school shallow cross down here to the bottom of the screen. And I really think he just misses this read. And I don't mean, I think the first read is inside fade. I think when it goes uh, closed out here, this thing just turns into a seam, most likely. Obviously guessing on that. This is the deep hook. This is the old school shallow cross coming across here. So if I had to guess, this would be kind of the one, this inside fade locked hitch out here. This is usually two, three, and then whatever the check down is as four. And so for me, for my money here, when I say over processing, I mean skipping reads. And it's not that it never happens. It certainly does happen. And it's probably not a great habit to be into. So no to that seam, no to that inside fade, no to that hitch up top. Okay, now the shallow cross coming right to you. Now maybe he has to move off of his landmark there and he just sees the check down flash. But to me, it's almost like he's getting to the check down before the check down's ready. Again, my own invented term relevant for this offseason over process. There it is. So still a completion, but is it technically exactly what is probably correct in the quarterback room? I'd probably argue probably not. Again, I think he does himself a little disservice here by just drifting a tick to our right. You know, let's that 41 get into the A gap and kind of flush him off his spot. But you can see that shallow coming across, right? The ball needs to go right on him. In fact, I'd probably make the argument that that shallow needs to settle up in zone. Maybe that's what he's... But it looks to me like he got off him, never even saw him. And it happens sometimes. Still not going to complain about a completion. But again, when we're talking processing, let's make sure we get the full scope of it. Right here, this is another interesting one. They've got some great sh shifts. They go from 3x2 two FIB to 2x2. Two two. They get hit with a field pressure here, bringing 6. What essentially ends up being 2 on the back. He's hot. Not a great concept, in my opinion, because the hot there is no hot to our left. So when the, they bring the back in, the line's going to 35. Two on the back, that's hot. He sees it. Fortunate to finally get it out to the hot. And it's kind of a unique play because I think he's hot. I don't love the concept that there is not a good hot throw down here to the bottom of the screen. And he's a good enough athlete to get out of it. Spins out of it, never gets hit, finds a completion. So again, where's the hot down here to the bottom? There is no hot. So he's already bailed out. If anything, you got the one-step hitch up top. But for my money, that's really tough to be hot one side and have the hot throw on the other. So don't love the construct here. From there, though, I love his ability to bail. You know, you hear all that, not a great athlete, whatever. Right here, making a play. So... It can be both good and bad in the same play. So the line's going to 35. Back's got 40 to whoever that new guy is. They both come. We're hot. Make an argument the back blocks the wrong guy. And we got a completion. So two plays that I would say are almost borderline would probably be graded as negative in the quarterback room. Still find a completion. Pretty sweet. This next one here, we've seen Alabama run this variation of the fake swing screen, fake bubble with the either post go or wheel from the slot. Now this one is on here. It's a nice play by 14. And it's just one of those things for me that shows the difference in arm strength at the exact at the top of this draft. So in the past we've seen this and then they run this bluff wheel here. So they fake the swing screen. And I've talked about it, when you fake towards the side of the of the move, meaning that we're faking this swing screen, that's going to bring everybody to the party, in my opinion, oftentimes. So sometimes it works, clean it, great. But to me here, this little swing, when he goes up into this window, 
there is a hole there. This to me is a potential deficiency as opposed to in comparison to other guys at the top of the draft who have maybe a little bit more arm talent because this is there, right there. That window's there. You put it right on him, drive it. And it's really what he tries to do. The timing of it is correct. He just doesn't quite have the club. You know, it's a little tin cupish right there. We're just going to keep going at it. Nice play. Not the end of the world. Take a shot. Tight window. Fake. Wheel. Just a tick too much air. Not enough velocity there. Just painting the full picture. This is another one that paints a full picture. This is a great. I love how they get to these little now screens, bubble screens. But I mean, you know, how much is this as the quarterback? It's a, it's a nice throw. It's a handoff. But at the same time, come on. That's just giving it to the best player on the field. Best player in the game. I mean, that's a touchdown in two-hand touch. Thing of beauty. Not taking anything away from the accuracy. It's a very nice throw. But when you look at a box score, you know, that throw on a little RSO, meaning run screen option, like the numbers, yes, please. Got to be able to tackle in space. Good luck. Again, just painting the full picture as far as this performance when you see a four touchdown, 300 yard day, 25 for 30. I know he doesn't throw the most screens of anybody coming out, but it is what it is. It's just the, the way the game's played nowadays. This is one of my favorite throws up top, a little what I'm going to call a stop route. I love the anticipation. A little bit of a chuck and duck. Not the end of the world for me by any means. Love the anticipation. Now, obviously, love throwing it to the best player, too. See, he's going to get smacked here. Love seeing the uh, toughness. I'm not sure about the whirly bird. But from the wide, it's even better as far as the timing of what's going on here. So I'll pause it at the top, be able to really see. Okay, this is not the easiest ball handling in the world to reverse out. Tight hitch. Look when he goes to throw this thing. He's separated right there. Receiver up top's not out of his break. Got white right in his face. Deliver the ball right up on his face. Perfect. Outstanding. That's to me is like a well covered Sunday completion. Everything except this whirly bird thing. Beautiful. Love it. Another touchdown. This one to me, you know, again, everybody's got talented guys. This is great scheme. You're going to play man coverage, helps to run with the guy. Nice touch. 35, can't believe it. The flowing locks. But again, I mean, <laughs> I certainly wouldn't say a contested throw. A nice throw to a wide open guy. Great scheme. You know, either the corner up top is wrong or someone down here on 19 is wrong. That's too easy. But again, going out, making the plays that are there. It's not his fault that the Irish can't get lined up and play defense in the red area right here. Beautiful. Nice touch pass. Great design. Another one that I love design-wise here. Again, going from 3x2 to what is essentially 2x2, two two, 12 personnel, RPO, same side counter with a slant. Oh, it's easy to stop RPOs. No problem. We'll just play man coverage. Yeah, your guys got to be as good as our guys on the perimeter. I love how they're my guys now. Again, cool shift. The same side counter. Love same side ball handling. I think Alabama's been on the front edge of this for a long time. We'll quickly go through the run here. So same side means that the run is to the left, the back is to the left, and the sidecar stuff. So we're going gap down, gap down, gap down. We are kicking, and we are wrapping with the sniffer or the H, whatever you want to call them. A little gap hinge here. We're down. Now, the thing about this play that I love is right here, what I'm used to calling a deuce double team. So double team, usually horizontal displacement, kick, wrap, same side ball handling with that slant coming across right here. Love it on so many different levels. A bunch of different ways you can do this RPO, whether it's numbers in the box, whether it's matchup on the perimeter. One more time. Check that double team out. Get out of the club. Thank you, 70. I mean, my goodness. Everything but 19, 19's head down. 
pretty sweet, great design, excellent execution. Again, I personally, someone who got a course on RPOs, uh, love RPOs, love this shift, and I really love the same side ball handling here on counter. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. That's outstanding footwork from Mac Jones. Smooth, clean. And again, that's just, that free safety is playing so deep, he's a non-factor. Special. All front, special. But again, super efficient from 10, right? Doing, playing the play exactly how it's designed to be played. I mean, it's hard to knock them for great completion to a great player. On the body, on the break, yes, please. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. It lets you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I appreciate the support for the channel. Then if you're looking for even more Quarterback School content, hop over to the Quarterback School Patreon community or check out the multiple courses that we have available. Those links are in the description to the video. Let's keep this one going. This one, third and seven, up top to the number three. I love the anticipation on this little out. So again, kind of a go wheel by the one and the two. And then we're just going to put Smith on a nice little out. He gets this ball out on time. Really nice. Again, the Irish trying to overload the front, three to a side. But we'll pause this thing at the top, see exactly how he gets this thing out. So he's back at the back. Perfect base, no heel click. Look when he lets this thing go. The number three wide receiver running that speed out, out. Separate, anticipation, put it on him, big time conversion. Love it. Again, from the back, timing-wise, one, two, three. Again, three to a side. You can see what the front is here for the Irish. Put a lot of stress one-on-one -on -one blocks on the right side. Can't really get through the throw. Got enough torque. Got enough arm strength. Be able to get it out there on time with anticipation. This is another one of my favorite throws. Whirly Bird again. This in route. Love the ball location. Obviously, a great catch as well. Great route. He gets smacked. Again, what I'm going to call counter pass here with the their right guard, the guard on our left, pulling someone right in his face, still being able to get through the throw. So again, I mean, right in his grill. Can't get through the throw. Look at what he's working with here. Strong enough, got enough torque, and then check the ball location. Now, it's a great catch. He goes up and gets this. It's by no means a perfect throw. It's a better catch than throw. But what I love about it that you can really tell from the wide is the timing. One, two, three, hitch, throw, thing of beauty. A lot of trust, a lot of precision, just a lot of good football all around. Again, watch the timing of it. When he lets that thing go, separates right there. Wide receiver up top, not out of the break yet. Got to time it, trust it. Understand the scheme. Love the ball location again. About as high as you can get. Just lots to like. Again, this is about as good of a rush pressure as you can get on these big play action shots. They've got two. They've got one-on-one. -on -one, one with the pulling guard. One-on-one -on -one with the back. Catch an edge. There it is. The guard in the back do a decent job sorting that out. That's probably not the matchups they want. They'd probably rather exchange that, have the guard on 91, and have the back on 6. I'm guessing 6 is green dog in here. Beautiful. What a catch. Man, that dude can play. Another one here. Love the scheme. Again, 2x2, two two, get to 3x1, FIB. Again, we're going in motion. Their orbit motion. RPO, yes please, we'll slant down here to the bottom of the screen. Again, same side counter, the exact same footwork, obviously going the other way, not quite the same design because now we've just got a single slant versus that double slant look we saw before, but just such a stretch all over the place. Your horizontal stretching with the motion, you're stretching them down the field with the slant, you're running gap scheme power, gap scheme counter, I should say. Just big plays all over the place. And I will say that, you know, again, I'm not in the room, so I don't necessarily know exactly how they're reading this. But I can tell you just like pure math-wise, we'll snap it here. To me, 
I guess maybe because they rocker the safeties would be the only thing. The quarterback is going to be responsible for the seventh defender most oftentimes. So four, three, right? He's responsible for whatever one of these three is the DB type, in my opinion. So he makes a decision where to go with this because I want to say up top, it's either a speed out or a little hitch. Then we've got a slant down here. Now this slant is no guaranteed money in my opinion because this safety is coming down from the heavens and we're getting this what they, I believe they call orbit motion. So he could slow play this thing and be right in the slant window. So again, how they're doing this, maybe he comes back. So whatever side the number seven or eight defender comes down to, they're responsible for, but they only have six blockers here. Five, six. So not that they get fortunate here. They they don't. I just don't know how they're reading it. It would be fascinating to know exactly how they're reading it. Everybody's open. The guy up top is open. The slant is open. The run, not quite as good. Double team, not quite as good. Nice job by the DN squeezing it down. But that's certainly a lot of space for a slant. Again, he's doing a great job. He being Mac Jones is doing a great job executing this offense. This offense is also well-oiled and really good everywhere. Newsflash. That's a thing of beauty. That's a lot of space for slants in a really important game. Guys just can't match up on the perimeter. Another touchdown here. Down here, sprint out. little comeback to the front pylon. Again, too much space. Can't handle them on the perimeter. Again, the best player in college football last year just go, doing work. I like this one for Mac Jones just because he's out of the pocket, changed the launch point, be able to stay on the move. It's a great route too. Uh, you know, when you get to the middle of the end zone, I'm, well, I'm not sure what else you could do there. Maybe run to the corner, but that's a tough assignment to put on that DB, that much space, that island. I mean, look at the space. That's just too much space. But great execution, nice throw for Mac Jones. Let's see exactly when he lets this thing go. Again, a little bit of anticipation, just a tick. Nice throw, though, right at the front pylon. Love to see that. Accuracy outside the pocket. Not necessarily creating a lot, although there was that one hot, but the ability to do it when it's necessary. One more play here. I uh, got brought to my attention from a great Twitter to follow James Light. Love the account. Post all sorts of good stuff. Sark calls that concept a thumb. Complimentary play action off their deep cross play spear. Don't get lost in the verbiage, thumb, spear, whatever. But we will be looking at the thumb element of it. And all the thumb element of it is, is a fake over where you sell the over for 10 yards and then you come out of it like an out or kind of like a sharp corner. I love this concept. I've tried to run it a number of times. I kind of like the way that they do it better. I might incorporate it this way. Not necessarily going to call it thumb by any means, but the idea being of faking that over that everybody loves right now and getting into that space that's either that out, mid-level, kind of out towards the sidelines throw with that clear out post. So Mac Jones, Alabama offense, has a great day. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what you think of where Mac Jones might land, where he might fit best. Again, getting excited for the draft. Uh, thank you for the support. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.